Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session. We're going to study on the book of the major prophets, starting with Prophet Isaiah. A recording has been started. So even before we could begin with our class, can I request one of us to please lead us in prayer? Can I request uh, Leah Lama? Or Anita or Aradna, anyone can lead us in prayer. <clears throat> okay, Sid, please go ahead. Father, we come to the throne of grace. Thank you for this day, Lord. You have given us, Lord, as it is the first day of the week, and we are going to learn about the prophecy, Lord, and their prophecies, Lord. The book we are going to start, Lord. May yes. this learning and Lord may this prophet, so Lord, whatever we are going to learn, let it be of a blessing in and be an adding to the knowledge of, of, of the knowledge of Christ in our lives, Lord. Thank you for this day, Lord. You have given us. Thank you for all the blessings you have given us and the time we are going to spend learning about the prophet and prophecies, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'll just present a PowerPoint presentation for the class. Okay. I hope everyone can see this presentation. Okay. So in Old Testament, we have 39 books, out of which we studied on the book of Torah or the Pentateuch. That is the first five books of the Old Testament. And then later, we moved on to the book of history, where we had we studied we, uh, we studied on the 12 books of the history history and then from there we moved on to the wisdom and the poetry books which is five from the book of job to song of songs and now we are starting with the five major prophets book starting with isaiah and then we will move on to jeremiah lamentation ezekiel and daniel after which we will be covering the minor prophet books which are 12 books from the book of hosea till malachi so with this we will move on to the book of isaiah yeah So the book of Isaiah uh, comprising 66 chapters and is one of the most profound theological and the literary expressive works in the Bible, which is compiled over a period of two centuries, like later half of the 8th century and also the later half of the 6th century BC. So the book of Isaiah is generally divided by the scholars into three major sections, which are called uh, the first Isaiah. Let me move on to the next slide. The first Isaiah that is from chapter 1 to 39 and then it is called as the Deutero Isaiah covers from chapter 40 to 55 and Trito Isaiah chapters 56 to 66. Well, the first Isaiah, which covers from chapter 1 to 39, they believe, you know, the scholars say that it is written by Isaiah himself. Well, the Deutero Isaiah from 40 uh, to 55 and Trito Isaiah from 56 to 66, they believe to be written by the disciples of Isaiah from the school of prophets. Well, all this were written, uh, believed to be written in Judah. And uh, we, we look at his personal life, a little bit about Isaiah's personal life. There are, uh, uh, there, uh, there's very little information given about Isaiah, uh, Isaiah that he was married to a woman, uh, the prophetess, which has been mentioned in Isaiah chapter 8, 
verse 3 and she bore two sons isaiah has two sons which is also listed in isaiah chapter 7 verse 3 and isaiah chapter 8 verse 3 and according to the jewish tradition or in in uh, old testament it is known as the hebrew tradition isaiah was martyred by the wicked king manasseh who placed him in the hallow trunk of a caro tree and was sawn into two and many believe the book of hebrews in the new testament in uh hebrew chapter 11 verse 37 where in the e on in the list of heroes of faith he says sawn ascender where it refers to the prophet of isaiah well isaiah was also a hebrew poet uh prophet who was believed to have lived about 700 years before Christ's birth. He was also born in Jerusalem and he was said to have found his calling as a prophet when he saw a vision in the year of King Uzziah. One second, somebody has logged in. I'll just admit that. <coughs> Yeah, so Isaiah prophesied the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, and he spoke on God's behalf to the leaders of Jerusalem and Judah. He spoke, uh, first of all, on the message of God's judgment. And later, he warned Israel, corrupt leaders, that their rebellion against their covenant with God would come at a cost. And uh, that God was going to use the great empires of Assyria. And after then Babylon would judge Israel, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, judge uh, uh, Jerusalem if they persisted in the idolatry and into their sin nature. But that announcement combined also with the message of hope in the later part. So as I uh, talk about the uh, judgment, as I talk about the judgment, uh, 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 the way Isaiah put it across and later the hope, it also talks about in the book of Isaiah, if you see how the books have been arranged, the first 39 books of the Old Testament, which is talking about the judgment and immorality and the idolatry of men, you know, it, it, it compares, we can compare that to the 39 books of the Old Testament. And later, uh, the remaining 27 uh, chapters in the book of Isaiah gives a message of hope. And we can compare that to the 27 books of the New Testament, where uh, the Messiah is coming as a savior and a sovereign Lord to bear a cross and to wear a crown on himself. So here, the, the complete, the total 66 chapters of Isaiah has been compared with the books of the Old Testament and also with the books of the New Testament. We also see that Isaiah believed deeply that God would one day fulfill all of his covenant promise that he would send a, a king from David's line to establish God's kingdom. And uh, we also see that in Second Samuel uh, chapter 7, that he would lead Israel in obedience of the law of the covenant made at Mount Sinai. Uh, uh, the, uh, the law that was given to Moses, we see that in Exodus 19. And all of this was so that God's blessing and salvation would flow outward to all of the nations to whom God had promised to Abraham. And it's this hope that compelled Isaiah to speak out the corruption, the idolatry of Israel in his day, to warn them, to, uh, to ask the people to repent and come back. And later, he delivers a message of hope to the people who have received, <clears throat> who can hope for the Messiah. I'm sorry. With this, we will move on to the notes as well. Before we could move on to the notes, I'll just project this slide. Uh, here we see the same thing, whatever I, I just explained from chapter 1 to 66, we see that the first uh, uh, books have been compared with uh, compared to the Old Testament, which talks about the day of the Lord, the judgment, and later 27 books have been compared with the New Testament, where about talks about the Messianic and also about the hope that we have with the coming Messiah. 
and also the first 36 books uh, the prophecies were directly written by Isaiah and later from uh, from chapter 37 to 66 we see his disciples where the prophets from his school wrote compiled that together the scholars believe that way uh, yeah with this we will move on to our notes just stop presenting this and we can directly go to our notes. We just saw the background. We saw this. The authors we know is also uh, Isaiah is also known as Saint Paul of the Old Testament, and um, yeah, the New Testament quotes from all parts of the book were crediting to Isaiah from many passages. We see that in the book of John, quotes from Isaiah six. Chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. And also we see some of the quotes from in the book of Matthew, chapter 3 and 4. And also from the book of Romans, we see the quotes from the book of Isaiah. And they are the quotations from the second part of Isaiah by the other Old Testament prophets who wrote prior to the exile. And uh, yes, Jewish and Christian traditional views are only one Isaiah. We see that and Isaiah as a man, he was a writer, he wrote history that reigns from among the four kings from Uzziah, Ahaz, and he was also a statesman, a patriot denouncing all foreign alliance and he was a reformer like Noah preached righteousness and exposed the formalism as a poor substitute for spirituality. He was also a, a major prophet teacher and a theologian during his time and Isaiah has been called as the prince of the Old Testament prophets the the great messianic prophet the fifth evangelist after Matthew Mark Luke and John he's been recognized as the fifth evangelist who talks about the messiah and the prophet of redemption the evangelical prophet Saint Paul of the Old Testament the gospel according to Isaiah after Matthew, Mark and Luke and John's gospel. The prophet of the sons as he speaks more of Messiah than any other prophet. And well, the purpose of this book is to show that Judah uh, has a form of uh, godliness, yet it is corrupt immoral and uh, you know uh, social and political so he is he is uh, warning them to come out of the idolatry and the very purpose of this and also he is uh, uh, he gives a great promise of messiah delivering a message of hope to the israel and there's some additional information that has been mentioned in the book of Isaiah with uh, with a lot of quotes from the New Testament. And there is a detailed background. I would encourage each of us to please go through it. There's some unique features and the comparison with the other books of the Bible. With this, there's an outline, okay? So we will get back to our notes. So we will turn to our Bible from chapter 1 to 12. The main section focuses on Isaiah's vision of judgment and hope for Jerusalem. And it begins as Isaiah accuses the city leaders of the covenant rebellion and idolatry injustice. And God says he's, he's going to judge the city by sending a nation to conquer Israel. And Isaiah says that this will be like a purifying fire that burns away all that worthless in Israel in order to create a new Jerusalem that's 
populated by a remnant that has repented and turned back to God. And we also see that Isaiah, what happened? Okay. So we also see that Isaiah uh, uh, says that when God's kingdom will come, that all the nation will come to the temple in Jerusalem and learn of God's justice, bringing about an age of universal peace and harmony. Now, it's this basic storyline of the old Jerusalem purifying judgment into the new Jerusalem. This is going to get repeated over and over throughout the book getting filled in with uh, you know in increasing detail so that at the center section of uh, center of the section in israel's grand vision of god sitting is <clears throat> on the throne in the temple and we surrounded by this heavenly creatures that are shouting uh, that god is holy 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 and isaiah suddenly realizes just how up that he and his people Israel are and uh, and he certainly um, and he, he, he and he knows like you know this sin and this unholiness will be destroyed and and he, he, he prays he seeks God for God's holiness uh, and he says that we are not holy and uh, when he asks God for uh, to cleanse so God's holiness in the form of this burning coal comes and burns him uh, but not destroying him it burns his lips but not destroying him but rather it purifies him from his sin and as Isaiah ponders the strange experience that uh, uh, God commissions him in a vision uh, with this uh, very difficult task to keep announcing the coming judgment but because of Israel has reached a point of no return his warnings are going to have a, uh, a serious effect on hardening of people if they don't repent. At the same time, Isaiah is trusting on God's plan that Israel is going to, um, uh, is comparing it to a chopped tree. Uh, like if the tree is chopped and left like the stump in a field uh, uh, and, and, uh, and itself is scorched, burnt but all of that burning god says that this uh, stump is a holy seed that will survive into the future and it is a small sign of hope that who or what is that holy seed now we may wonder okay okay uh, so the stamp has been compared with that holy seed. And uh, now we may think, who is this holy seed? The rest of the section will give us that answer. Who is this holy seed? Where we will talk about it in the later section. Well, Isaiah confronts Ahaz, a descendant of a uh, king of from the David's line. Just give me a minute, please. Okay. He has, uh, was a descendant of king and the king of Jerusalem. And he announced his downfall because God said that his great empire of Assyria, who will first chop Israel down and devastate the land. But there is a hope because of God's promise to David that he is going to send, uh, uh, send uh, uh, a new king named Emmanuel, which means God with us. And Emmanuel kingdom is going to set God's people free from this violent, oppressive empire. And also Isaiah describes that the coming king as a small shoot 
or a new growth that will emerge from that stump that was cut off that is from the david's family it's this king that is known as the holy seed which has been uh, uh, stated in chapter 6 in this book of isaiah and the king is going to be empowered by god's spirit to rule over a new jerusalem and bring justice for the poor and all the nations will look to this messianic king for guidance and uh, his king will transform his kingdom will transform all the creations and bringing peace with this we will move on we will move on to the next chapter we see that isaiah saw another empire arising after assyria that is babylon who would also attack jerusalem and actually succeed in destroying it completely along with the temple and brings the uh, 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 and uh, and we see that from uh, chapter 13 to 27 where he says that uh, you know uh, with a large collection of poems he explores god's judgment over israel like here we learn about the fall of babylon and israel's neighbor and we also see that isaiah could see that a very the serious world power would one day be replaced by the empire of babylon a nation even more destructive and arrogant and a ba- babylon's king claimed that they were higher than all other gods and so god vows to bring babylon down because of the pride that they carried within them and not only babylon but isaiah also goes on to list israel's neighbors accusing them all of the same kind of pride and injustice and here we see that isaiah predicts their ultimate ruin but he remembers for uh, god's judgment is never the final word for israel or the nations with this we will move on to chapter 24 to 27 here we see a, again a list uh, of poems that tells us a tale of two cities uh, their lofty uh, that has exalted itself above god and they corrupt nature and unjust which uh, you know uh, which stirred god's anger and this city is an uh, rebellious in in nature and it described with the language that's all bored from isaiah's earlier description of jerusalem and then later assyrian and then later babylon which is all put together well now this city is destined for ruin and one day is going to be replaced by the new jerusalem where god will reign as a king over the redeemed humanity from all the nations and there's no more death no more suffering and here isaiah is also portraying a message pointing far beyond his own day it was a message for all who were waiting for god to bring a justice uh, on this violent oppressive kingdoms and kings and also the injustice with the with the injustice nature of people and to bring the kingdom of justice and peace and healing love among all the people around them they are looking forward for that messianic king to reign and the following section in chapter 26 to 38 we see isaiah is predicting that the assyrian armies come and try to attack the city and so ezekiah humbles himself before god and he prays for divine deliverance and the city is miraculously saved by overnight but ezekiah rises in immediately followed by his own fall also as he hosted a delegation from the babylon and he tried to impress them by showing everything whatever he had the position israel's treasury he showed them the temple the palace everything uh, to the babylon kings and it clearly made an effort for them you know uh, he thought he can impress them with the uh, political alliance and protection but then later it turns to be his own fall and isaiah hears about this and he confronts ezekiah for his foolishness 
he predicts that his partner will one day betray him and return as an enemy to conquer Jerusalem. And we know that in 2 Kings chapter 24 and 25, that Isaiah was right. What happened to Ezekiah was Babylon plundered Jerusalem and it destroyed everything. And it brought Israel, temple, and the kingdom into ruins. Over 100 years later, this happened. Uh, yeah, And uh, we see Isaiah also warns of his divine judgment, uh, which led, uh, he shows to be a true prophet, because all that he prophesied was fulfilled. And remember the purpose of God's judgment to purify Jerusalem and bring the holy seed that is the messianic kingdom over all the nation. And it's that hope that gets explored in the next check section that is from chapter 40 onwards. We see the first main section of 40 uh, through 48 opens with the announcement of hope and comfort for Israel that people are told that Babylonian exile is over and Israel's sin uh, has been dealt with and the new era is going to begin so that they would return back home to Jerusalem where God himself will bring his kingdom and all the nations will see the glory. Now, we can uh, we can ask a question like who is saying all this to us whose voice are we hearing in these words of hope well the prophet in these chapters is that somebody who's living after the exile in other words the time period described by ezra and nehemiah but isaiah died in 150 years before any of that so what are we supposed to make this year it is the uh, it is the prophets uh, who were from his school who were there who who, who, who actually uh, noted all Isaiah's prophecies and they saw the fulfillment started uh, you know uh, writing it started noting and you know uh, recording it for a later purpose for us so 200 years into the future that he's speaking to the future generation as if the exile has passed over and um, you know it gives a deliverance message of hope so here we see the prophets from the school have been uh, recorded all that isaiah has been said so in chapter 8 to 29 and then 30 we were told that isaiah was rejected by the israel leaders that he wrote and sealed up a scroll of his message of judgment and hope that he passed it on to his disciples as a witness for the days to come Yeah, so uh, now the chapters of 1 to 39 were designed to show uh, the judgment talks about the prediction of judgment that was uh, that way fulfilled in the exile and it also says that Isaiah was a true prophet now we are moving to the next section of the 27 chapters which is describing or giving us a hope talks about the Messiah and so after exile is over Isaiah's disciple have treasured his words so long and open up the scroll and began applying his words of hope to their own days. So on this view, the book of Isaiah consists of the first collection of Isaiah words as well the writings of his prophet, uh, prophetic disciples. And then, uh, and then we also see a view that end up everybody agrees that these chapters were announcing that the future hope has come. So God is fulfilling Isaiah's prophetic promises. And so the prophet gives us a hope that Israel will respond by becoming God's servant, that is after experiencing God's justice and mercy through history. That they will now begin to share with the nations who God truly is. But that's not what's happening in Israel. Instead, we are, uh, we are seeing the witness to the nation is actually, uh, we see actually they are complaining and accusing God here. Yeah. 
He says first that the exile to Babylon was not divine neglect. Rather, it was divinely orchestrated as a judgment for Israel's sin. And second, we see that Israel's, uh, it was for the Israel's sake that God raised up Persia to conquer Babylon so that they would come back fulfilling Isaiah's words. So the right conclusion uh, that uh, we see that uh, we see that Israel would draw is that their God is the king of history, not the idols of the nation. So in fall of Babylon and the raise of Persian king Cyrus, Israel should see God's hand at work. So uh, it becomes a servant telling the nation who God is. But the end of the trial in chapter 48, we find that Israel is still as rebellion or hard-hearted as they were before. So they are now. So God disqualifies them as a servant, but God God's, uh, but God is still on his mission to bless the nation. But we'll see how we will fulfill that. So the prophet says, one second, somebody has locked in. I'll just admit them. Yeah. So uh, the prophet is saying here, God's going to do a new thing to solve this problem, which moves into the next section from 49 to 55. So here we see the inter uh, introduction to a figure who's called God's servant, who's going to fulfill God's mission and do what Israel has failed to do. And God gives his servant the title Israel and sends this person on a mission to first of all restore the people of Israel back to their God. But second, to become God's light to the nation. And here we are told that a servant is empowered by God's spirit to announce good news and to bring God's kingdom over all the nation. It sounds just like the messianic king from chapter 9 and 11. But then we learn, um, we also see that in chapter 61, as we see that he's been empowered by God's spirit to announce the good news. And we see that fulfillment being when Jesus came on this earth, when he started his ministry we see him go into the synagogue open the scroll of isaiah and start from isaiah 61 saying that the spirit of the lord is upon me he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor we see the whole uh, uh, few of the verses been narrated by jesus himself and we see that has also been recorded in the book of luke but then later we learn the surprising way of how this servant will bring God's kingdom, that he is going to be rejected, beaten, and ultimately killed by his own people in reality as he's been accused and sentenced, sentenced to death. And he's also going to die on behalf of the sin of his own people. So the prophet here, we see that he's been uh, uh, prophesying completely on the Messiah, who is Jesus, who actually we can see the fulfillment of the prophecy which was been prophesied by Isaiah at that time in the New Testament. And then after his death, all of a sudden, he also says about, he also uh, prophesies about his resurrection. Servant is just alive again. And he hears that his death, he provided a way to make people righteous, that is to put them in a right relationship with God, the restoration of human back to God. We see the prophecy been fulfilled in the New Testament. And um, with this section concludes by describing the two ways people can respond to the servant. Some will respond with humility and turn from their sin and accept God's servant did on their behalf the work that he did on the cross. And these people are called the servants or the children of God and also the seed. Remember the holy seed that we spoke before in chapter 6 is the seed and these are the ones who will experience the blessings of the messianic kingdom. But there are others who are called simply the wicked who rejects the servant that is rejects Jesus and this teaching which brings us to the final section of this book from chapter 56 to 66 where the servant inherits God's kingdom 
and these chapters are beautifully designed as a uh, uh, designed and which brings together all of the themes of this book together at the very center and there are three beautiful poems that describes how spirit empowered servant is announcing the good news of god's kingdom to the poor and he reaffirms all of the promises of hope from earlier in the book of the new jerusalem which is inhabited by god's servant will be the place from which god's justice and mercy and blessing will flow out to all the nation of the world and and which will surround the poems and our two long long prayers of repentance have been recorded in these chapters where the servant confesses israel's sin and they grieve over all the evil they see in the world and around them and they ask god to forgive them and that his kingdom would come here on earth as it is on heaven now on each side of these prayer are the collections of more poems that contrast the destiny of the servants with that the wicked who has been uh, who persecuted them uh, god is uh, saying that he is going to bring justice to all who pollute his good world with their evil and selfishness and idolatry and it's going to remove them from his city forever but the servant but the servant uh, those who are humble before god and who repent and they own evil they are forgiven and they will inherit the new jerusalem because they have repented and asked for forgiveness which we discover in an image for an entire renewed new creation uh, who will be in the new jerusalem and this brings us to the very outer frame of this part of the book uh, in this renewed world of god's kingdom uh, god's people from all the nations have been invited to come and join the servants of god's covenant family so that everyone would know that their creator and redeemer is the messiah is a servant so the book of isaiah ends with a very grand vision of the fulfillment of all god's covenant promise through the suffering servant that god has created a covenant family of all the nations who are waiting with hope for god's justice and uh, you know to bring that messiah through whom they will be delivered through whom they will be set free through whom they can see experience the peace and love of god so here we see god's kingdom finally come here on earth as it is in heaven and that's the very powerful hope that um, the book of isaiah is actually uh, declaring or uh, or uh, prophesying to the people of israel where uh, there was a, a turmoil and a loss of hope but here in the last 27 chapters we see that isaiah is giving us a message of hope uh, giving them a promise that uh, this is just not the end but then we have uh, god's mercy and love on us that god will never cut off uh, the promise that he made to david but then he will give us the message Messiah, who will reign from David's line, and he will be obedient until his death, and he compl and he prophesies over uh, Jesus and how he'll be birthed and uh, how his life will be led and uh, till his death and ascension, and how we will redeem Israel and set us back into the new Jerusalem, new world with full of hope and love. So this message uh, uh, just then stirred the people of Israel who were in exile or after the exile. But then it also gives us a hope to us as we read the book of Isaiah. we see the prophecy of isaiah which has been fulfilled and it it also gives us a hope that as we are also waiting just like them for the second coming of jesus that with all hope we can wait because those prophecies will come true so that even though we die uh, even uh, uh, we can believe that we will be we will live alive with jesus with him in the new jerusalem 
this is the hope of message with uh, uh, Isaiah delivered to the people in Israel. And today, this book is also gives us stirs the same kind of hope to us that as we wait on the second coming of Jesus. With this, I end with the book of Isaiah, and I'll keep it open to our class to uh, to share on uh, on the book of Isaiah. What personally you have learned from this book, you can take this time to share your learnings. Open to class. Yes, you can share about what you learned from the book of Isaiah, how it has impacted you. Um, I think, uh, as we already mentioned, it, there are quite a lot of prophecies which we can take uh, for our personal lives as well. Um, one of which, which uh, one of the prophecies which really encouraged me these days was um, chapter 32, was. Uh, 18, um, Isaiah chapter 32, verse 18, then my people will live in a peaceful habitation and in secure dwellings and in undisturbed resting places, which uh, um, I think we can declare it over our families and any relationship that is broken or any any place where uh, any houses which we feel like there are, uh, there is discomfort, there is uh, disturbances, we can uh, apply these promises and declare God's favor. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, John. Anyone else would like to share your uh, experience from the book of Isaiah? Can I share, Pastor? Yes, please, Divya. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Isaiah, as uh, even uh, you were mentioning, like the, there's a lot of uh, comfort uh, um, that promises that give us so much comfort. And uh, now for me, um, there there are lots of favorites in Isaiah. Uh, one is especially uh, Isaiah 41.10. I think I had already mentioned it once. Uh, like uh, where God assures his presence with us and asks us not to be afraid. Do not fear for I'm with you. Do not be dismayed for I'm your God. I'll strengthen you and help you. I'll uphold you with my righteous right hand. So it's uh, uh, there has been, you know, uh, times in my life that this verse has really helped me get over, you know, difficulties, uh, that assurance of God's presence. Also these days, yeah, the waiting on the Lord, especially with the verse that says, uh, those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. Mm -hmm. They will mount on wings like eagles. So those verses, uh, yeah, we, as uh, you were mentioning also, like uh, the uh, even though in the beginning we see the judgment, but uh, we see a God uh, who cannot, you know, just leave, his children by themselves like orphans uh, even in yes. isaiah i think 49 uh, there's a verse which says i have engraved you on the palm of my hands like uh, even if your mother forgets you i'll not forget you so these are promises to the uh, uh, nation of israel but yeah yet it is promised to as individually as well individually as well yes mm -hmm. yes yeah this reminds me about isaiah 43 also individually when we read it it brings so much of comfort to us yes yes thank yes. you thank you Divya. thank you so much Master. yeah anyone else okay. yes um, I found the, the book of Isaiah to be one of the most prophetic books in the Bible. And uh, we realized that most of the prophecies that God spoke through the prophet Isaiah uh, were fulfilled in Christ Jesus. It gives us the hope that whatever God has said concerning our lives will also be fulfilled in its due in its due time. 
Yes. And uh, I also realized that um, the people went into captivity because of their own sin. So yes. you must not blame God for what uh, the, the predicament that comes to us as a result of our own uh, willful sins. You must humbly surrender to God and ask for his forgiveness so that he can restore us to um, our lost glory. I also realized that God does not give up on his children. He always wants to win the hearts of his children back to himself. So through his prophet, he speaks to us and he calls us to repentance. Similarly, he is speaking through Jesus Christ in, our, in the New Testament era, calling us all back into repentance so that we will be restored to the lost glory of humanity. These are the few thoughts I want to share from the book of Isaiah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elisha. Thank you. Anyone else who'd like to add on to this book? Brother Lubega, Brother Subhashish. Yes, Pastor. Actually, this book is a prophetic book. And a long time before Jesus actually came to this earth, uh, Isaiah prophesied that uh, Jesus will be pierced for our translations. And uh, yes. it's, uh, in uh, Isaiah 53, verse 5 to 6, and it's really wonderful that God has uh, revealed uh, his word through Isaiah long, long time before. And um, we really thank God and that God opened the doors for our translations through Jesus. And, uh, and it's really amazing that uh, how uh, Isaiah actually revealed. And um, really, even so, I praise God that uh, how actually that time will be that uh, people, they, uh, they were with uh, Isaiah because they, these are the days we have many prophets. And, and it's really challenging for us to believe who is the real and who is the false prophets because sometimes they prophesy and they happen sometimes they prophesy and and they maybe uh, they denied okay maybe some other things but this is a really I really like Isaiah that whatever the things actually God has uh, spoken through him and it it actually had happened and uh, he said uh, that uh, with his wound, we are healed, and it happened that Jesus, actually, because of his uh, wound, that we are healed many times. We, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, brother. Okay, <clears throat> anyone would like to go share their experience or the verse that has been impacted in their life from the book of Isaiah? If not, we can dismiss with a word of prayer. Okay. Zeli, would you like to dismiss us with a word of prayer? You're still on mute. Okay. Elisha, would you like to lead us in prayer? I think there's some problem with Zali's mic. Okay. Thank uh, you. We are praying. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and bless your name for this great opportunity you have granted us all through the study of your word. That we pray in the name of Jesus, that as we have discovered, discovered from the book of Isaiah, that your promises are yea and amen, and surely they will come to pass at the right time. We pray yes. that Lord has all prophecies concerning the Son of God, Jesus Christ, were fulfilled. We pray that may you fulfill whatever that you have said concerning our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, we mm -hmm. pray that, Lord, whenever we are falling off your grace, 
May your mercy continue to uphold us as you upheld the people of Israel in your mighty arms. We pray that, Lord, O oh God, continue to guide us with your words. Speak to us each and every moment as you spoke through the prophet Isaiah. When we are going astray, Lord, speak to us by your spirit in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you and we want to bless you for the lives of each and every person in this session. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Elisha. Thank you all for joining in today's session. See you all tomorrow. God bless. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. God bless.